Hi, my name is Chris Strauff. On December 1st, I got a kidney transplant. Now, thousands of people get kidney transplants every year. While that's amazing, it's not all that unique. What makes mine out of the ordinary is that it was all arranged over Twitter and Facebook. But I'll get to that in a minute. Now, they say the best place to start is the beginning, which of course sounds easy enough. But where is the beginning with a disease? When you got it? Because I have absolutely no idea about that. I had no clue that anything was wrong. I was just a little tired, my feet and back hurt. It just seemed to be part of that deluxe package called your 30s. Is it the day you're diagnosed? Because that was extremely anticlimactic, mostly because they were throwing out all sorts of frightening ailments. After talking about cancer or heart failure or a stroke, something called IgA nephropathy sounds pretty tame. Now IgA is a disease that makes it so your kidney doesn't process proteins correctly. Seems pretty simple, but eventually it destroys your body, it raises your blood pressure, makes it so you retain fluid, poisons your brain, and a lot of other things that, well, quite frankly, you'd rather not have happen to you. And what are the early symptoms, you ask? Well, there are none. Well, nothing like a tab that pops up on a Genio turkey that says, screwed, which would have been really, really handy. No, you get two, elevated creatinine, something only found on blood tests, blood tests they only do when they think you might have kidney disease. So you can see what a gem of a symptom that is. And foamy urine. That's it. Now personally, I never spent a lot of time looking at my urine, or for that matter, the urine of others, to have something to compare and contrast it to. Eventually, other symptoms do come into play. For me, it was passing out. Unpleasant while standing. Absolutely baffling while sitting. Elevated blood pressure. Not that I knew at the time, because let's face it, who under 50 checks their blood pressure with any regularity? And when I started this, I had absolutely no idea what normal blood pressure was. But suffice it to say, I did not have it. The elevated blood pressure makes the kidney disease get worse, and the wheels on the bus go round. When I was told I was need a kidney transplant, my initial reaction was panic. Thing is, every day 19 people die waiting for a transplant. I really really, really, really didn't want to be one of those 19. If you needed one, where would you go? I went where I always went and put a post on Twitter minutes after I got the news from my doctor. Shit, I need a kidney. Throughout the course of the illness, I had been posting on Twitter and Facebook and writing on my blog and feeling fairly vocal about the trials and tribulations of it. Asking people for a kidney is a big deal. It's not like borrowing 50 bucks. It involves a lot of testing, surgical procedures, and then, of course, the lingering fear of what if? What if they need it in the future? What was truly amazing, though, was the response that I got. The first people I heard from weren't even people that I knew in meat space, but followers on Twitter. Before I was even really cognizant of the situation, people were making lists of their blood types and sharing information about transplants. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. This is my family, this is in friend. this is in brothers and sisters. These are guys I met at a party once. Former students, fans of bands I had been involved in, lawyers I worked with, strangers who for some reason took an interest in my ramblings on the internet. Some were people I had never seen in years. Some were ones I'd never met. It's truly awe-inspiring that on the turn of a dime they consider making that kind of sacrifice. For the most part, kidney disease didn't have a profound impact on my life. That is, until the day it did. My body could no longer remove the waste from my blood, breed poison. Much like the hero of the movie Crank. If the poison was not removed, it would eventually kill me. Jason Statham got epic gun battles and sex with supermodels. I got dialysis. Dialysis sucks. Literally. It's the process of taking your blood out of your body, filtering it through a machine, and putting it back in. Like a trip to Jiffy Lube, only it's you. Now the first time you go through this process, it's amazing and weird and fills you with a certain sense of awe and wonder about the medical technology. By the third time you do this, you're more interested in what's on TV while you have to sit there for the four hours that it takes to do it. Now during this time, 19 people go through the full run of tests for transplant compatibility. Almost another 50 more get blood tests and doctor checkups only to find out their blood type is wrong or would be unhealthy for them. Four find out because of these tests that they have diseases that would otherwise go undiagnosed. And in all that, there was one, Scott Pachyditis, an acquaintance from rock band's past, and quite possibly the nicest man on earth. 
Scott answered my tweet and my prayers. He was a terrific match and worked through clerical errors to be my donor. Through it all, we never talked in real time. Never a message longer than Facebook until five days before the procedure. He came to our house for Thanksgiving. You would think that would be weirder than it was. I thought a lot about what my first spoken words to him would be. How do you thank a relative stranger who's making a choice that impacts not just me, but everyone around me, my wife, my family, my friends. It's a stone that makes a hell of a lot of ripples. What words are big enough for that? I came up with many speeches in my head that the vibrant oratory that Orson Welles would have found over the top. In the end, I opted for hello. Sure, it was a little less epic than, say, a speech from Hamlet, but it seemed to do the trick. It was like all other Thanksgivings that I've ever had in my life. Family and friends eating too much tofurkey, drinking too much, and, of course, it was a Thanksgiving that had enough sentiment to make Norman Rockwell want to puke. At the end of the day, a lifetime of thank yous can't say it. Six minutes and 40 seconds can't say it. Twenty slides certainly can't say it. But thank whoever your God is for Scott Pachyditis, and for Jack Dorsey, who started Twitter, and Mark Zuckberg, who started Facebook, for helping me get my life back again. Thanks.